Let's get into some car news. I'm sure by now many of you have seen this viral video of a man, a disgruntled customer, crashing his vehicle through the dealership while he tried to return the vehicle, according to the stories that are out there. And they said, no, sir, you cannot. So he forcefully returned the vehicle, hard parking it into the dealership. A few weeks ago, I did some statistics and about 36,000 times this happens a year in the United States, which equates to about 100 times a day where a vehicle impacts a building. But if you want to return your vehicle, there are definitely other ways to do it other than crashing it into the dealership. It looks like Nissan and Infiniti are in a little bit of hot water. This affects me personally because I have an Infiniti outside. Granted, it's a older Infiniti. Infiniti sales have plummeted by 50% over the last five years, according to autoblog.com. So the struggles are because of an aging lineup, strategic missteps, and unfulfilled promises that have left both dealers and consumers disenchanted. Even the redesigned QX80 SUV, which is a very nice looking vehicle, has failed to turn the corner on the brand. Some dealers around the country are expecting to lose over $2 million this year alone. For 2026, Aston Martin has announced that the Valhalla, a 1,064-horsepower plug-in hybrid, is on its way. This thing is beautiful. Aston Martin will be making 999 units. Let's take a look at some of these quick stats for you car nerds. 1,064-horsepower, 811 pound-feet of torque. And finally, I still have not got to work on my infinity that is broken down outside in front of my house where it has sat for two and a half months. That is the car news. Okay, so every once in a while something happens and like in society and I have an opinion about it. And these are usually the things that get me labeled as a libtard, although I'm about as far as a liberal as you're ever gonna get especially if you know me, but I know that we had this murder of the CEO, uh, Brian Thompson of uh, United Healthcare, by this guy named Luigi, allegedly. I'm not convinced that it's actually Luigi, and me and millions of other Americans are not entirely convinced. There's a lot of stuff there, way too much stuff there that's just awfully convenient, and so that remains to be seen, but what I'm going to play for you, and hopefully some of you have already seen this, depending on what social media platform is, on Pierce Morgan Uncensored, he had Taylor Renz on there. Taylor Lorenz, I don't really know who she is. I looked her up a little bit because her name sounds familiar. But her comments is what I'm going to react to here. So let me just hit play. We'll listen to a little bit of it. I'm not going to get monet. I'm, I'm probably going to get a copyright strike or monetization strike. But guess what? I'm not monetized anyway because people don't really watch this channel. But let's just go ahead and listen to this. Uh, I do believe in the sanctity of life. And I think that's why I felt along with so many other Americans joy, unfortunately, you know, because it joy. feels like. Right. Joy. She felt joy that Brian was gunned down. Serious? I mean, joy in I the guess man's I execution? Not, not, maybe not joy, but certainly not. No, certainly not empathy. Because again, we're watching the footage. How can this make you joyful? Greedy health insurance executives like this one push a policies of denying care to the most vulnerable people. And I Okay, so I would say there's a lot to react to, but there really isn't. You know, I think the I think the big obvious problem here is this guy Brian Thompson was gunned down in the early morning by this again, I don't know if it's really Luigi. Someone walked up and the footage is everywhere. Point blank, assassinates this guy, kills him. Now, I get that he's the CEO of a major healthcare system, and I get that our healthcare system in the United States is not the best. It needs dramatic reform. I work in healthcare IT, so I don't handle this, but I do work with a lot of teams that handle insurance claims. But at the end of the day, you have a CEO, you have an employee, you have an executive of a company. Now, we don't know if he's up there trying to make the change, if he's up there saying, deny more claims, we need more money. You know, if he gets up there and he says, by the end of this fiscal year, we're going to cut, we're going to accept twice as many claims. We're going to cut our claim rejections by 50%. And we're going to grant more claims and pay out more money. And I don't care if it costs this company $40 billion. This is what we're going to do for the American people. It's the right thing to do. 
he probably gets fired the next day. So you have to understand that people in these positions, you know, they're not powerless, but they're not necessarily the dictators that people think they are. And to find joy that somebody at the top of a healthcare system gets murdered in broad daylight. And here's the deal. It's not even just Taylor Lorenz. I've seen a lot of people on social media cheering on the murderer and calling on the person at McDonald's that ratted on him. They're calling this person the rat. You ratted on Batman. I've heard a lot of people calling him Batman and Bruce Wayne because he has two personalities. This incredibly smart Luigi guy in the daytime, whose family, by the way, is connected to the healthcare system, if it really was him, by the count of 50 to $100 million. So, And he has back issues. So maybe it's a crime of passion. Maybe it's not even him. But it's weird that we like to celebrate weird stuff like this. It's not the murder of Osama bin Laden. It's not Adolf Hitler killing himself, allegedly, to end the war. A guy who says, eradicate all these people off the planet, eradicate all the Jews, the person responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths of humans. It's somebody at the top of a healthcare, a CEO, trying to make a living. By all accounts, he was a good father a good husband, and he's just an employee of a system. Sure, he's making millions of dollars, potentially. I don't know how much Brian made. We do know CEOs cash in on a lot of bonuses, depending on what happens with the company's performance. But to think that his murder somehow justifies, is justifiable because the healthcare system on a regular screws over people and denies a lot of claims, that's a problem with you if you celebrate that. That's inherently evil. Now, I don't know if Taylor Lorenz is a bad person, but she's definitely a bad person for having that thought and celebrating it on national TV, on an interview. It's the same person, it's the same type of person who hates our president-elect Donald Trump so much you wish that the first assassination attempt person wouldn't have missed. Like, really? Can you imagine what would have happened to this country if that were successful? How about you just vote and try to vote this person out? It's crazy, but unfortunately, it's social media. You know, I had friends where they would send me videos and I'd watch people and I'm looking, I'm like, did you just send me a video of somebody dying? I don't want to see somebody die. And now I'm kind of numb to it. Now I'm never like that person deserves what they get, but there's people in the comments that say, Fafo, right? F around and find out. That's what this person gets. And there's a lot of people who have the Fafo approach for Brian. And it's a sad thing. I think we need to take a look in the mirror and decide, is this really what we want in our society? Because it's pitiful, it's it's sad, it's pathetic to celebrate someone's death like that. I get it if the healthcare system has screwed you over, screwed your family over, they denied somebody right next to you and you had to sit back and watch them die. That sucks. And I could almost understand if that were the case with the, and again, again, we don't know still if it was really Luigi or not. We don't know. There's a lot of things that just don't add up with that. But if whoever the killer was, let's say that they just lost their family or somebody really close to them and it was a true crime of passion in the moment without thinking it through. I understand from that aspect, you still don't celebrate it, but maybe the jury feels differently when it does go to trial. But this was just murder, slam dunk case, murder in the first degree or first degree murder. I don't know. I'm not an attorney, but I have a friend that thinks that there's going to be a sympathetic jury. When they do eventually find the killer, if it's not this Luigi guy, that's going to look at the healthcare system and how messed up it is and how people get denied all the time and people die all the time and somehow find leniency in the sentencing. No, this was murder. This was cold-blooded murder. And whoever did it deserves every penalty that's coming to them. And as people, we got to do better. We can't sit back and celebrate watching something like this. It's a horrible thing to see. That's it off my soapbox, drop your negative comments, tell me I'm crazy, tell me I'm detached, tell me I'm a libtard for believing this way. I'm just a human being, and I really wish human beings were a little bit better. The Hard Parking Podcast, a little bit of cars, so much more available anywhere you get your podcast, or check it out at hardparkingpod.com.